guys, how's it going? Ghost Richard today. And today we are going to be installing the steering stabilizer mount. Now, holy smokes, I was looking around for a strong one. I've been wanting one, but I didn't see anything that quite met what I was looking for. And TMR Customs came through. As you can see, they give you a sticker, they give you this pamphlet in there. And if you ask them to, um, in their tab, they will give you the steering stabilizer bolt. If not, and you have ram assist, they have a ram assist spot right here. We aren't gonna need that because I don't have ram assist. If you have the really jazzed up Fox shock steering stabilizer with the oil reservoir off to the side, um, they do sell a piece additionally, so you can attach that to here. It's kind of a beveled piece. You'll see it on their website. And like I said, they give you some really nice stickers and a thank you note. Other really cool thing, they give you torque spec sheets right here. So I'm also gonna be converting some of these to inch pounds when I'm doing this, because I use a foot pound and an inch pound mini. Um, so if you hear me say some inch pounds rather than foot pounds for the smaller amounts, that's why. Let's jump right into this. Next thing you're gonna need is a SAE Allen key set, preferably for ratchets so you can do your torque specs. We'll put that off to the side. Just in case I don't have one of those, I will try and find between my SAE and my metric right here, the best fitting Allen key so we don't strip. Highly recommend 262 Loctite. Again, uh, TMR sells their own brand of it, but I'm just using my Permatex and it is also 262 rated red Loctite, which is what they are asking for on all fasteners. So, First thing you want to do is make sure you have all the tools. So go over this list, which is really awesome that they give you uh, with the foot pounds. And again, I will relay the foot pounds as I put it on. First thing we want to do though, is remove that old one that is up here. Focus, Mr. Camera. So the first thing you want to do is slide on. I believe that is a 19 up there. Let me double check. Oh, yes. So remove this. 18 millimeter bolt off the top end so we can move our steering stabilizer. Now, if you're wondering, hey, Rich, why is yours flipped around? I have the JKS flip kit in here because I did the drag link. If you don't have this and you need the track bar flip kit, cool thing. TMR sells that as well, and it's actually not that bad price. I think it's only like 45 Canadian. Again, don't quote me on that. Go take a quick look. It should be on their website. Just type in track bar flip kit. And again, if you're wondering about how to install one of these, I do have a video on it. It's just under the JKS version instead. Let's get this uh, disconnected on this side first. One other thing to quickly note, when you're ordering your TMR steering stabilizer mount for right here on your tie rod, you need to know the thickness of your tie rod. For me, it's pretty easy. Looked it up online, Synergy automatically tells you it's one and a half inch chromoly. By knowing that, I ordered a one and a half inch block. Uh, if you have TMR Customs, theirs is like two inches. So you have to make sure you order the two inch version. Now that we've gotten that all out of the way, take your 18, make sure we're going the right direction and yank her towards you. There we go. And again, I think it's best that you just get your steering stabilizer out of the way right off the get-go. By the way, if you're wondering which one this one is, this is the Old Man Emu. I will be replacing this at some point. We aren't going to be using that anymore. And we won't be able to use that one anymore. There we go. Why use pry on when you have hands? No, you should definitely use a pry bar. And that's probably what I'm gonna go get here in two seconds. I wouldn't suggest using a hammer on your steering stabilizer shaft here. So just use a pry bar right here on your old one and lift it up and out. Like I said, pry bar. There we go. So, steering stabilizer is out of the way. Now we need to remove the old one out of here. To do so, we're gonna need, I believe, 
a 15 up here. So we'll hold that right there when it comes time. And then 15 on the bottom bolt. got this upside down so it's clockwise now I'm just gonna pull this bolt right out bolt. switch my ratchet around Wow, I didn't even have this in there for that long. All of this went junky. There we go. So, now that we've got that out, I've got to pull this out. Now, the best way to do this, see how there's a screw, or not a screw, well, it is a screw hole, but you're gonna slide one piece in here and slide another piece in here. I like to use our medium-sized crowbar, literally in the shape of a raven or crow's foot, whatever. Yeah, slip it in right here, slide it into that hole, and we're just going to rest it against the axle housing. Make sure it's nice and tight in that hole. You don't want this slipping, otherwise you could really hurt your knuckles. I'm telling you that now. So once you've gone ahead, done that, right over here, I would try to leave this right where your marks are that you already have on here, and grab this one and lift. And then if you grab this and lift, oh, see I'm bending that? Out of the way, check this out. Out and off. So you see now I jammed it against the axle housing there, the tube right here, and literally cranked on this, and it separated. Now I can slide this bracket off, and it's out of the way, and we're all prepped for our new one. Now one thing I would suggest doing, if you so wish, take your steering stabilizer, slide it in, all the way, if you can get it. Let's show you guys exactly what I mean here. All right, so now I know this is as far back as this wants to go. So I'm going to put a mark right here. Again, as long as I know roughly where it is. And then, oh, I pull this. Oh, might even pull my ratchet out here. All right, and now I know the maximum my steering stabilizer wants to go is right here. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so then I measure in between these two points from which I'm right here, I get about six and a half. So let's say three and a quarter, which would be right here. This is where we want that center bolt to line up. Now you could just leave those right there as long as we know right now because there's no, I'm going to actually use the edge of this. But I just want to know that right here is where we want it. We want this, or I want this at least, to sit behind like this. But now I know this center bolt needs to be right where that green is. And believe it or not, if I were to line that up, if you take a look, it just means I lined it up at the edge of the tape. So I think what I'm actually going to do, now that I know that that's it, Take that one off, because I can still remember this is the edge I want three and a half from, but I can put my block right up against this tape when I remove it. Perfect, right? Next thing you want to do, remove every single screw from here. Why? Because we're going to have to red Loctite them. So go ahead and remove all 
six bolts here and the three in the center. Couple quick things. First, make sure, see how I'm looking at those ball joints that go right there, that go at the very end of our tie rod ends there? We wanna make sure that this rod is in line before we start working on this. During this process, we wanna try and keep that rod in line if we can. Um, next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is after you have all these bolts out, we're gonna throw a little bit of red Loctite on. Now, I would, I would put the red Loctite on as we put each screw on. So, give me two seconds here, I'm gonna line these up. Next thing I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna quickly tell you which these are. So you need the 3 16 that's right here, and you need the 5 30 seconds. Those are the two that worked for me. So let's go ahead and we're gonna actually crank in these first six bolts, the bigger bolts, and then we'll do the center ones last. If you've never done Loctite before, all you do is a little bit here on the threads. Just like that. As you screw these in, it's gonna round around the whole thread. I'm gonna actually do a couple of these and stand them straight up, only because that way I can try and tighten these down a little bit smoother. If you can, try and do them caps up. I guess another thing I should warn you about is if you're in the state of California, that Loctite is known to cause cancer and you should use gloves if you so wish. That just goes right there. This one just goes right here. Next thing to do is not crank any of these in. You need to balance these out. So again, just bring it over here. We're just going to try and screw this in without binding. You do not want to bind. As a, so from this point, we need our biggest of the two, which is this one, I believe. Yes. What we're gonna do is just try to hand tighten these up. So once you've done that, go ahead, set your torque wrench to either 16 foot pounds or 192 inch pounds which for me would be right here. From here, take your 3 16 and go ahead and make sure she's down. As you can see, I've already gone through just so I can show you this. So what I've done is first, right here, and then what I did is I actually went all the way to this side, and again, I did cinch these down first. It's very important that I mention that. And then tighten that one up. And then I went over here. And then I went over here. Right like that. And then just do the two centers. Once you've done that, you can take a look here, see and make sure your gaps are pretty even up and down if you really want to. For me, they're close enough. This I can clean up afterwards. This is a mixture of uh, Loctite and my, uh, yeah. Anyways, and then the next thing, so take those little threaded guys, put them in here, just lightly. After you do that, time to take torque wrench once again. 156 inch pounds or 13 foot pounds. So for me, that would be right here, 156. All right, let's switch this up. 530 seconds. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the center one first. There we go, she's bit. Take a look at that. Next thing we need is the hardware which we got because we check marked regular steering stabilizer. Remember, there's the RAM assisted one, 
regular steering stabilizer, and last but not least, the crazy Fox shock, little weird hardware, which if you have it, you'll know you need it. If you have a regular Fox shock steering stabilizer, you don't need it. Only for the crazy Primo one. So now that we have this, leave one washer on this side, put your steering stabilizer in here, put the other washer on this side, and then screw it in. So, like I said, bolt through here. And then after you put the bolt through there, this bolt might actually be, I might have to actually pop out this center cotter, the bushing on the inside. The reason why is this bolt is actually thicker than that. Oh well, give me one sec and if I do have to pop that out, I'll show you how to do that. Once you get here, if your bushing is too small because you have the stock steering stabilizer like I did, you'll have to press a new one in. Now, what I'm gonna do is quickly finish off this bit of the video for the people that don't need to do this. So what you'll need, this one like so, and this one. What you're going to do is you're going to throw that red Loctite on those threads, just on there. Just like this. All right, after you've done so, you'll see how I have one washer on here. Put this through with the one washer on one side have this washer on that side. And from there, screw it into that hole on the back. Again, careful, you don't wanna cross thread it, just hand tighten it. Once you've gone ahead and made sure that you've got the Loctite on there and you've got that bolt, and again it's bolt, washer, stabilizer, washer, screw in, grab your torque wrench at 90 foot pounds, Go ahead and get her on that bolt. So to finish this video off on an awesome note, the guys at TMR sent me another one because the other one stripped out and it wasn't because the bolt went in cockeyed or anything. The bolt actually went in and then pulled the aluminum out. Now there's a reason why. One is I think my steering stabilizer is a little bit wider on the knuckle with the old man Emu. And the problem is, is it might've only caught a certain amount of threads and pulled out. I ended up buying a bit longer bolt by about four threads and I've actually been using that temporarily until this arrived and it, I feel confident in. Now, would I go to 90 foot pounds with this? No, I still won't. I think I'm gonna just red Loctite it and put it to 60 if I'm honest because even at 60, that's a heck of a lot. Either way, I'm not gonna bother, of course, going in and putting uh, this in on camera because I've already done it before. So just follow along. Just wanted to give you an update at the end and just so people don't think that, oh, TMR, no, these things are awesome and I love the company. Thanks again, TMR, for sending me a new one. One thing I wanted to quickly show you guys is when I was done with this, I found that this actually sat best like this, just like I had the factory one. I originally tried it the other way and I did rotate it just so you can see. Take an 18 box wrench, just like that, ratchet up top, and loosen it up. All right, if you remember, bolt doesn't fit through, right? I found a bushing in my pile of extras because I always hoard these things. That is gonna work. The thing is, I gotta push the old bushing out. Now I'm going to show you how to do it. First thing you're going to do is penetration fluid. Soak your bushing in it. Just like that. Soak this side too. After that, big long bolt goes in this side. Next thing you need is a big socket that is bigger than this bushing, but not bigger than the metal piece right here. And this is going to slide on just like this. Then, you're going to tie this like so. 
Now, as you tighten this bolt, it's going to push this bushing in and that other bushing is gonna slide inside this socket. Pretty neat, eh? So, let's see if I can get this ready to go. I just need to grab the right wrench. And huzzah, just like that, I had the right wrench. This is gonna go in here. This is going to switch to a 17. Now you can choose whether you're gonna do this with a ratchet or you're gonna do it with an impact. Impact is obviously the faster choice. And like I said, just go ahead and tighten this and you should see that start slipping inside the rubber like so. Way easier, by the way, to do this with an impact. I'm gonna actually switch this over to this side. Make sure this doesn't spin on the ends. Oh, of course, I had a couple in one chance of that happening. Had to change sockets a few times to make sure I got the right depth. But as you can see, as you go, I just want to show you the finishing touches here. As you're going, oh, jeez, I put so much penetration fluid on it, it was doing it even though the ratchet was on the wrong way. All right, let's see in a second here. Now that that's flush, let's go ahead and loosen this off and see how close we are. Uh, you know what? Not where I want it to be. I want it a little more, I think. There, now let's release it. If all else fails, I'll just love tap it with a hammer. Get it exactly where I want it afterwards. There we go. I used a master. Look at that. Came right out. There you go, new bushings installed. So, again, if your bushing doesn't work, you'll either have to A, go try and hunt one down, B, just buy a new steering stabilizer, or yeah, that's your two options. But I think it's a better idea to go with the more hefty bolt anyway. And look at that, we're good to go. So, with this one, make sure it goes Bolt once again, washer, steering stabilizer, washer, nut, and just crank it down. This one, I don't usually do any sort of torque spec for, I just crank it. And once you get her cranked, it's not gonna go anywhere anyway. If this ever loosens off, it's still gonna be in here, which is fine. All right, now that we've got that back in place, you can finish the rest of the video Thank you so much.